What is going on everybody? Dark and Windy back at it again with another video. And guys, we are ending our trek through Kilo. We're finally here. After 212 months, we have finally reached the end with the last few legendaries. So, buckle up, enjoy it, and let's get into it with Kekanas. Now, Kekanas is based on the past Pokemon, it's the past Pokemon. And along with Ginzanas and Shuranas, it is a member of the Timekeepers of Kilo. Now, the Timekeepers are essentially just past, present, and future. So, their deal is they were born from a crystal that fell from outer space in a sense. And they just, they have the ability, they each have the ability to let you see a certain part of your life or other people's lives. So, for Kekanas here, it is the past. So... It's it more it's more babyish. It's more childish. It has the bib shape, the bib like shape, the pacifier like mouth, and the the pants, the little diaper like pants, and the little cute cutesy cur curl on its head as well as the cheek the cheek blush. It's more babyish. It's more childish to uh, to signify how people were are in the past. We're all we all start off as babies, so. Born from an orange crystal that fell from space, it, along with Genzanas and Shoranas, are able to time travel. It keeps itself hidden as it spectates humans and Pokemon viewing what happened in their past. So it pretty much just inspects the people's past to see what's going on and just to read and get to know them better. So yeah, that's, that's, that's Kakanas for the past. Genzanas is for the present. Oh, well, hold on. While we're doing this, I guess these guys are revamps. I will say that now. These guys are indeed revamps. Hence why they are much more clean. They are much cleaner than some of my other ones. So, let's go. Let's go view the older version of Kakanas first. If it's here. Yep, here it is. Okay, so... Before I decided to actually revamp them and add the, actually give each specific one uh, a specific kind of appearance to tie into what they are they just look remotely like uh so yeah this is bad the purple is far too saturated the, i don't know what kind of pink i used here the the i used i think i'm pretty sure these colors are aren't even the same i gave it two tendrils of the back of his head for some reason and the crystal is not even there it's just some kind of weird diamond shape so yeah, this version compared to its current version is a lot better. It's night and day. So now we're gonna move on to Genzanas, who is fond of the present. So Genzanas, it is able to easily manipulate things in the present day when it feels that something negative is about to happen, tugging on its cords on its chest, hiding its psychic power. So it essentially manipulates the present day like if it know if it think if it senses that something bad is about to happen, it will try its best to intervene in order to keep it from happening. But it's not always gonna have a good result, I don't feel. So it's designed I couldn't I couldn't really think there's really not much you could say about the present day. Like that's design wise, I don't feel. So essentially I just gave it like a bolo tie kind of deal. Other than that, not much not much is really stands out for it like it just has the tufts on the back of its the back of its head and it's looking like ears and it has the the orange part of the art orange crystal like it's like it's others and it's older form looked looked tragic just looked outright tragic so yeah as you can see here um, the orange crystal is here in its chest, but the diamond, the shape is not on the tail. Instead, the colors are still awful. Overall, the tendrils at the back of his head still, it has this like weird crest looking thing. It just looks bad. Overall, it looks, it looks more, they look more alien in their original one, but I don't really like how, how it is. So I'll say that this one has a lot more character to it, in my opinion. And finally, we have Shorinaz to end out this trio. 
Now, Shorinax is a future Pokemon. It has the appearance of like an old wise man or just an old guy in general. It has like the, the beard looking thing. It wearing the overalls. It has the orange crystal on its tail. So yeah, and if you if you were able to look it closely, yeah, it has three. It has three feather. It has three uh, notches on its wings for its wings, while Ginzanas. Gizanes has two, and Kakanas only has one. So that yeah, that's just an extra little detail that I put there to signify as, as things go along. But yeah, overall, Shornaz is the future. It has an old elderly appearance. It is assumed that it was one. It was the one born as a leader over its siblings because of its old appearance, able to see the futures of other people and Pokemon. It tries its best to ensure that negative things do not transpire due to the antics of its siblings. So, like I mentioned before, Kakanas and Genzanas, they usually just monitor people and try to intervene and interfere with things that they feel like are going to happen. And it may not have a good result. It may not have a bad result. But either way, Shornaz is the one who has to deal with it in the in the in a in a grand scheme of things so yeah the, 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 those are the timekeepers uh did their revamps i really like how they came out for their revamps uh finally for sure now let's show its older version the older version is probably one of the only ones that kept something well aside from the aside from kakanas keeping kind of sort of the curl from his original but yeah sure is probably the one that has the most similarity it was that only mainly just being the beard looking thing and the curl on his head besides that it's pretty much yeah besides that they're different like i said they the, the first versions looked more alien than the current versions which is fine by their own merit but the current version is completely completely blow them out of the water next up we have Adorasia the earthly Pokemon is based off of Gaia I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly yep it's based off of Gaia however it has some problems because I have not revamped her at all yes it's her it's a her because of um we know that I know that not all legendary Pokemon are really have genders, but there are special okay, but there are special occasions like uh, Cresselia, Latias and Latios, uh, Heatran, etc., etc. So yeah, Adoraja is kind of weird. It has the kind of like a generic head shape, and I can't really that it's kind of hard to discuss it because it's not really like he has the hearts on his kneecaps or something. I don't know what I I don't know what I was trying to do. I don't know I don't think there's an original version of it either but yeah it's 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 just kind of weird and disjointed it, it doesn't resemble anything that deals with got with earth or anything it's supposed to be a it's a normal ground type so it's just weird it's overall just completely weird but but that's okay like legendary pokemon are were never my strong suit honestly like complex designs like i could do complex design but it just take a long while because i, I don't want things to look too dis disjointed and all over the place so yeah right now Adorasia is is kind of generic and just boring not really legendary at all but Patanaros, i can say that Patanaros looks a lot more legendary so yeah, I'm happy with Patana. I'm happy with Patana Rose, but it still needs to be revamped. It has the same head shape as Adorasia, but the body shape looks okay. The legs, the the legs are okay. The wings are okay. Overall, it just has to. It just needs to have a more legendary, like grand appearance. So, and the area Pokemon is based off of what is it? Uranus or Uranus or however you want to say it. But Uran Uranus, yeah, Patana Rose. He is able to keep away all storm clouds, but also allows him when he is needed for vegetation. What? He is able to keep away all storm clouds, but also allows him when he is needed for vegetation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it means I he allows rain storm clouds to come out when they are needed for rain to help plants grow. He has helped protect. He has helped protect. He has helped protecting why. Grammar was not my strong suit. 
I just copy and pasted these straight from DeviantArt back in the day when I was making this wiki. He has helped protecting Keela from hurricanes and tornadoes by devouring them. So yeah, this guy eats eats natural disasters like hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that. Um, yeah, I didn't read out of Rachel's Pokedex and see what she does. She is known to have created the land of the Kilo region. She works alongside with Protaneros to keep Kilo a prospering region. Oh boy, okay. Okay, we're just gonna move on. I can't really say much about these two. Like, basically, Adoresia help Adoresia helps keep the land good, and Potenteros keeps helps her by keeping natural disasters and stuff away from it, so that things can thrive. That's pretty much it. There, there's no like grand thing like with um, like with Tawada Gun and Fasuda Gun. These two are are much much more scaled back than those two. Next up, we have the Mythicals. One, the first one being Chupaca, the cutthroat Pokemon is based off of Chupacabra, but it's pretty generic, like a pretty generic canine like shape. And but the original form is pretty good, the original form is cute. But I need to, I probably need to revamp it again because we don't, we don't, I don't want it too many uh, ball, just balls with limbs. It well, there's nothing wrong with balls with limbs, honestly. That, don't take that out of context. But, yeah, it's alright. It has the gracious form, and this is the ravenous form. And it only it only changes when it's exposed to, like, a mystic redstone. That's that's one of the... Yeah, that's like, like I said before about um, uh, certain items being used just in place of other stuff. Yeah, this is, this is just one of the cases where... This is just like a completely different thing altogether. So this this would be completely my own thing. So yeah, and it's lore. One legend states that this savage legend. Oh right, right. It says legendary because okay. So yeah, Chupaca was originally going to be a legendary Pokemon, but I ended up bumping it to mythical, bumping it to mythical status because I felt like uh, having the timekeepers and uh. Potanaros and Adoresia were enough. And Chupaco didn't really contribute much to like a, a big story in a grand scheme of things. So, yeah. One legend states that this savage legendary devoured livestock and left the bones arranged at the village's entrance, striking fear into villagers. This Pokemon is known for its menacing attitude towards the kind keepers as they continuously end up hindering its species section every time they travel through time. Wait. Okay, now I'm remembering. Now I remember. The, this guy was originally going to be the enemy of the timekeepers. There's no real correlation or lore or like real legendary story like in mythology or anything that does that. But I made that connection for some reason. May, I guess mainly because they were psychic type and it was dark type. And that was probably the only reason. They're not even goats or anything so... Yeah, this no longer makes sense. So yeah, this is definitely this page in general needs to revamp from the designs to the decks. But yeah, and the final the final mythical of Ro of Kilo, Rokinka, the cultural Pokemon. For oh okay, I was wrong. It start it stops at four oh nine. My bad, my bad. But it's all right. Rokinka is just the cultural Pokemon and. It's another one of those situations where, oh, oh, now that I am, now that I am thinking again, hold on, because, let's see, because if I'm remembering correctly, yeah, okay, so yeah, some of my, these guys came from the conscious entries, let's see, where, 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 here, Jacanios. Okay, so Jacanios is where the timekeepers originally came from. This was the base form for all of the timekeepers. This is where they came from. It was going to be a it was a time traveler kind of thing. So yeah, I ended up splitting. It has like the three separate tails, so I ended up like splitting it, splitting it up into like three separate mons: past, present, future. Like the, it was originally all one mon at first. It was just going to be the one time traveler mon, but it was for a contest, of course. So I ended up repurposing it and splitting it up into three different mines, and that was the end of it. 
and it was a good thing I did too because this just is ripped off of Jirachi with the with the body uh, with the body eye. Um, the time keep it, the time travel thing is Celebi's, but not but Celebi's not the only thing allowed to time travel. Plus, my stuff not related. So yeah, and it just has a clock on its head for some reason. But yeah, this was it. This was the original Timekeeper, and then for Rokinka's right here. Rokinka was originally a contest entry. Yeah, Loki Shinko culture. So, yeah, it's pretty much just like the. It's pretty much just like a mythical, legendary type of deal, like one of the cutesy ones. Uh, it's based off of a fox. Has like the rings and the yellow and like the. It's a trickster, so I gave it like a Loki, Loki's hat and stuff like that. But the thing, the thing with the lore for it is the rings on its tail glow brightly when it brings newly found ideas and power to those who wish to have them. It has a very kind but mischievous nature, taking and bringing cultures and ideas to different places in the world. So basically, Rokinka is the one that spreads culture and everything around. It helps share people's cultures around and everything. It retains the information and if it and if someone wants to learn something about other people or their culture or things like that, it would go to a, it would have to find a Rokinka somehow and Rokinka would give them the knowledge of it so that it doesn't come off as like offensive or they do stuff wrong, things like that. That that's Rokinka's deal. So yeah. Hold on, and let me see. Oh, let's go back right quick. I'm pretty sure this was not Chupaka's original. I'm pretty sure this was not Chupaka's original uh artwork. So let's go to this. If it's still here, it is not still here. Well, let's go to the ravenous form and see if it's if its original is still here. And it it is also not here. Okay. Well, let's see if Rokinka's original is still here then. I believe it is, but I could be wrong. And I wouldn't be surprised if I was wrong. It is not here. Okay. But the the older version, you, you guys just saw the older version back uh, on DeviantArt, so it's all right. But with that, I, that's the end of the Kilo region, guys. All 212 mines, all in one place. So with that in mind, and the, and the fact that a lot of these guys have not been touched in years and in dire need of revamps. Just based on how they are currently, what would your team be? Let me know in the comment section down below. But but for right now, that's going to be the end for Kilo. Next up, we're going to a trek through Kaisek. And you guys, and luckily, Kaisek is not as long. So, well, it still is kind of long, but not really. So, stay tuned for next time where we go on our trek through Kaisek. So, like, comment, subscribe. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, and with that, Dark and Windy out.